Where we left this um, after the third video had a spaceship flying around like this, backwards and forwards if you imagine. We, um, we put a little bit of inertia into the movement to give it some nice little effects so that when you lift off the button it drifts for a little bit left or right which is quite useful and we added some shooting. I'm going to stop talking while it shoots because the shooting is a lot louder but you can see we've got some bullets firing at a, 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 a sort of interrupted rate. So that's where we were left at the end of the last video. So what I'm going to look at in this one, I think, is it's time to put in some objects to try and dodge. And I thought the first of those objects could be some meteorites or asteroids or rocks or anything coming down the screen towards us. So if you remember, of course, what we had is we have this function here, add new bullet, that will add a um, object to a table. And that object has its own variables. And because we can pass functions as variables in Pico 8, it also has functions for drawing itself and functions for updating itself. So I figured what we would do is have a second function like this, which is going to add some meteorites to our game. So let's go to our graphics first, because obviously it won't be much use without them. And I shall attempt with my limited skills to draw a meteorite. That's a terrible start. Let me try again. Right, so I think we will have them in gray and we will have them in some sort of size like mm, this. Let's have a look. Okay, so we're starting to put together a bit of a rock there. Bit of a, um, this dark blue is always useful for sort of shade, so I'm going to put a bit of dark blue at this side over here, like this. Okay, and then maybe over on this side we'll have a little bit of sort of sunlit, or at least some sort of pretend lighting that we can put in like that. That gives us a little bit of light there as well. Uh, you know, looking from a distance, that's not entirely terrible. I might trim that bit off there. Uh, yes, ish, ish. What happens if I take that one away and put that in? That is average, and I will accept that for now. Um, if any of you out there in the um, wonderful land of YouTube are any good at drawing 8x8 eight eight sprites, then please post, reply, and however format you would like, a better 8x8 Meteor Sprite than the one I've drawn. I'm um, more than happy to improve things by, by getting someone else's artistic skills on board. Anyway, for the time being, there's our Meteorite, Sprite number 8, don't forget. Okay, so as I've always said in programming, um, if you can possibly avoid it, don't write anything twice. So let's copy the whole of function add new bullet, and instead, let's create function add new. I'm just going to say rock because it's going to keep things short. So let's think about this rock. It's going to be coming, if I look at my game sitting in front of me here, we want the rock to be coming in from the top of the screen in some sort of random location in the x direction. OK, so we're going to have to give it an x value. We don't have to pass it a y value because it's always going to start just off the screen. So I will remove that. DX and DY, remember these were the speeds for the bullet. Okay. Um, I think I will leave DX and DY there because it m might be that we want it to have some sideways movement as well to drift across the screen randomly. So we'll have a go at that. And then on this one, I also had these two others. One was for the life and one was for the color. And in this instance, I'm not going to need life or color, but I might need, I'm going to put underscore S for the sprite. Okay. So. S is going to equal underscore S, which is just going to tell us the sprite number, and we don't need that one. And we don't need that one. We're not going to be adding them to bullets, we're going to be adding them to rocks. And if we do that, it means up here we need to tell it that rocks exists. Okay, this is our declare objects function which runs here when we run init objects. Okay, so the very beginning of the init of the function in it, we run init objects and it declares the two tables, one for the rockets, uh, sorry, one for the bullets, one for the rocks. All right, so I'm going to add, where am I? Here we are. I'm going to add to the rocks an X, a DX, a DY, a sprite. How's it going to draw itself? Well, it's going to, we can worry about this, the PAL later. We literally just have to draw sprite self dot s and where are we going to draw it we're going to draw it at self x self y okay 
in which case we are going to need a y up here aren't we and this y is going to be above the top of the screen and if you imagine because we know that the sprite is 8 pixels high we could start the sprite at say minus 10 so I'll move my mouse out of the way at minus 10 this means it's right off the top of the screen up here so that you can't see it and then it will appear into view update how are we going to move it well yes the x is going to be the x plus the speed of x y same thing we don't need to worry about the life because what we'll do instead is we'll say if self dot y is greater than the very bottom of the screen so once it's come off the bottom of the screen let's say at about 130 just to make sure it's completely gone we will delete it from rocks okay and that's it that's going to be our um our function for add new rock at the moment so how's it going to work well we need to work out where on earth we're going to generate these rocks okay so so we're going to need a sort of um, a function or something at the beginning of the game that's going to actually put these rocks in. Don't forget, at the moment, this is just um, uh, uh, not quite a mock-up, if you like, but it's a prototype of the game. It's not going to be the final thing. So some things are going to get hard-coded. So let's just in here put a little thing in about rocks, and I'm just going to put in max rocks. Okay, and I'm going to say there's going to be a maximum of rocks on the screen of, let's say, three. Okay. So in update here, we're going to need to check max, rock, max rocks, okay? So this, to start with, we're going to have to say how many rocks have we got. If we don't have enough, we have to create some more, all right? So we've got max rocks there. We can get the length of the rocks um, table here. So we can say if the length of rocks is less than max rocks then. Okay, so this is basically saying if the number of items in the rocks table is less than the maximum number of rocks we want, then we want to add new rock. Okay, so it's the same as if we were shooting down here where we add new bullet. So we're going to add a new rock. Where are we going to put it? Well, we'll put it randomly 128 on the X, in other words, anywhere across the screen. And then what else will we passing it? Um, rock, rock, rock. We're passing it an X, and then a speed in the X, a speed in the Y, and a sprite number. So we're gonna pass it random 128 as the X. We're going to pass it a speed in the X, which to start with, I'm just gonna put it as a zero. A speed in the Y, let's have a random two. Mm. If I just use random two as the speed in the Y, I do run the risk of my rock never moving. So I'm gonna make it random one plus one. Okay, plus a half. Let's see how that goes. And what sprite was it? Well, it was sprite eight, wasn't it? Um, you remember sprite eight is there. And we can close button, all right. And that should add our new rock. So each time the, um, the stuff goes through, okay, each time we run the update route, we check how many rocks have we got? If it's less than the maximum number of rocks here, we add one, okay? And so that'll happen once, twice, three times. Then when we've got three rocks sitting in here, this won't function anymore. And so we'll sit with three rocks until one of them drops off the bottom of the screen. Once one of them drops off the bottom of the screen, it's removed from rocks. And once it's removed from rocks, the number in rocks drops below maximum rocks and a new one's added. Therein lies the theory. Let's actually test to see what really happens. So we run, and as always, we get an error. So add rocks, unclose square brackets. So that's over here. Function add new rock. So somewhere or other, I have not put a comma. There we go. No comma. Let's try it again. Hurrah, we're off. Where are my rocks? Where are my rocks? I know where my rocks are. Right, so self y is self y plus dy. So our y value we set at the beginning to be minus 10. And each turn we're adding, whoops, sorry, we're adding around that much. So we're adding a positive number, so it should be coming down. 
Okay. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. I know what I haven't done. I've created add new rock, but again, down here, if you remember, in order to update the objects, there's this one for D, in, uh, sorry, for, I'll say R in all rocks, R update, and obviously for R in all rocks, R draw. So I'd forgotten to update and, and draw the rocks. Wee, there they go. Look, there's three rocks. Okay, where are they going to come this time? One, two, three. This is all right. I could probably manage that. Maybe I'll have some more. What will code in a second? That one's coming a bit quick. Oh, I'll tell you what. Those rocks look um surprisingly better than than I imagined they might. I'm um I'm actually marginally impressed by things. Um, they're they're really they're really okay. That's good. Okay, so this is super. Let's have it now. Um, ooh. I'm quite happy with that at the moment, actually. And that sits there quite nicely and sits as a fairly decent length to a video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause at this point, OK, and upload this one, which just looks at getting rocks to move. The next video is going to have to include something to do with collisions. But the idea of collisions and collisions between the object and the bullets is bigger than um, just putting onto this video. So I think for the time being, for this video, it's a really good um, summary of, of, of using the objects and the tables again to get everything working in that sense. And what I will do in the next video is I will get it so that the bullets hit the rocks and let's have the rocks split into smaller rocks. And those smaller rocks will travel in the X and the Y direction in sort of splitting off and they will cause all sorts of difficulties as well. So the next video is going to probably be the big one because it's going to pull collisions into the entire thing and we will see how that goes. Okay, but for now folks, happy programming.